Hey guys, my name is Rob Noir and today I have a very special video for you that's all about fixing NES controllers. But not just any original Nintendo controllers, this time we're diving deep into one of the more coveted ones, the famous dog bone, this thing right here. So just last week I brought this series back for a very special episode where I fixed a Game Boy Color, the Pokemon edition there, and went extremely well and that kind of inspired me to do a few more of these. I only have one off the top of my head, this one you're watching right now, but you might see more of this show in the future so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and make it happen the reason why there haven't been a lot of videos of can you fix it though is because well most of my retro tech works fine I've done a very good job maintaining and fixing it however there is one thing that I realized that does not work properly and it's this it's my dog bone NES controller so pretty much everyone's familiar with the original NES its design and how its controller look it's been used so many times for different things it's been in other games you can even get it it's like a phone case like it's pretty ubiquitous when it comes to gaming. But not everyone out there knows that there was actually a second version of the NES released long after the first one had come out. This version was actually released after the Super Nintendo had come out and was really modeled on that. It's what's known as the top loader. Now in some ways it's better than the original, in some ways it's worse, we're not really going to get into that, but the top loader also came with its very own special controller, which is called the dog bone. And much like how the top loader itself looks a lot like the Super Nintendo, well the dog bone looks a lot like a Super Nintendo controller. And honestly, I love the dog bone controller. I find it a vast improvement over the original NES controller. Now it is a little bit weird when you first use it. You kind of have to get used to the buttons being on a slight angle instead of being right next to each other, which can kind of throw you off a bit, especially in games where you use like both to run, like Mario or something. But after you get used to it, this controller is a joy to use, especially compared to the original. Now to be honest, I don't play a ton of NES games, but one of the ones that I got really into was Gradius, which is a side-scrolling shooter, which I think was originally an arcade game but regardless the NES version is super fun to play and when I first got my NES I actually sat down and played this game like for an entire night and then the next morning the middle of my palms were extremely sore and I couldn't figure out why until I picked up the controller again to play some more Gradius the next day and the edges of the controller dug into the heel of my palms and really hurt now obviously a smooth rounded controller is the norm in modern days and the dog bone really adopts that so overall I just really prefer this controller however the dog bone controller that I have has one main issue. The D-pad doesn't work like it's supposed to. As best I can tell, the pads under the buttons are probably very worn down, but regardless, it doesn't register any of your presses anywhere near as responsive as it's supposed to, and often when you're holding over or down, it will mistake one for the other. Like, it's just, here, I'll show you an example. So this is actually the first game where I ever noticed the issue with this controller, which right now I'm pressing to go over, and he's not. So, okay. If I hold over from the start, we're good. Now I'm pressing down, and he took him a minute, and now I was pressing over, and he went right up. As you can see, it's pretty frustrating to try and play with this controller. This is not the only game where I can demonstrate this, but this is the one where I originally noticed it, so I thought it was a good example. So this video here is going to be pretty simple, probably pretty quick. All we really have to do to get this thing back to perfect working order is to replace the pads underneath the buttons. I'll probably do all of them while I'm at it, but the D-pad is the main priority. Now there are a couple things that you can try, a couple ways to do this, and I have a few options over here, so we're going to see what really feels the best. Now over here I have what's left of an original NES controller that did not work at all. It was basically dead on arrival when I got it. I took it apart, tried to fix it, and there was nothing I could do. I still have the pads from this, so in theory I should be able to replace the pads in the dog bone with the pads from this. However, some of you OG viewers might remember I also did a Can I Fix It video way back in the day on the Super Nintendo controller where I changed out the pads, and when I did that I actually ordered a second set of pads for Super Nintendo controllers because I liked it so much. Now I don't know if these will actually be transferable. I'm not quite sure, but I want to give this a go because these were super, super amazing in the Super Nintendo controller. And if I can get these to work in the NES dog bone, that controller is going to be amazing, like even better than it originally would have been. But we kind of have to take it apart and see. I don't really know what it looks like in there yet. I don't know if these will be transferable. So as you can see here on the back, there are actually five different screws that will need to be removed to open up this controller. And they're star screws, so you probably have a screwdriver that would work to do this just kicking around. So after you remove the screws, you should be able to just pop off the back, right, like this. It's 
pretty easy. And then you're going to have the board here. As you can see, the back of the board, it's not very exciting. There's not a lot going on. The only thing to make note of is the way that they have this wire coiled through here to go through the end. You're going to want to do the exact same thing that they did when it comes time to reassemble this. But you should pretty much just be able to lift this right out. As you can see, that's the board of your controller, and these are the pads I was talking about. Now, to be honest, on close inspection, there's not a lot of dirt or anything wrong with the board or the pads themselves. I was kind of expecting more. You can notice that there is a little bit of dirt, but nothing major. So it makes me a little worried that maybe the problem is a little bit bigger, but I guess we'll find out. So while you have it open, it's actually a very good opportunity to clean it out as well. I always recommend using isopropyl alcohol. It's a good multi-purpose cleaner. It won't do any damage and it can get rid of a lot of gunk without too much effort. Also clean out the buttons themselves, just in case there's any dirt that might be causing problems. And I mean, while you have it open, you might as well give it all a full clean, am I right? And not just the buttons, but also this housing where the buttons go in. It's very important to clean this out, because that's where a lot of the gunk is actually going to get stored and build up over time. Okay, now that we have it all cleaned up and looking pretty nice, I'm going to try out first the Super Nintendo pads to see if this will work at all. So the Super Nintendo pads that I ordered are pretty simple, they're pretty basic. As you can see, the start and select button pad is more or less the exact same, so I'm actually definitely going to install that. The D-pad pad is also extremely similar. They're about the same size, they're just, this one's green and has got a little notch in it. I don't know if that notch matters. So as far as I can tell, a Super Nintendo D-pad pad settles in there pretty well. There's not really a lot of problems. Now the one that would normally go to the four buttons on the Super Nintendo obviously won't work, but I gotta say these buttons, I had zero issues with them to begin with, so I'm cool with just using a cleaned up pad from the original controller. These are the Super Nintendo shoulder buttons, which unfortunately, despite looking like a Super Nintendo controller, the dog bone does not have. So now we're just going to reassemble this controller and I'll give it a go. Now if this doesn't work as well as I'm hoping, we'll just take parts from my broken original controller and we'll fix it with that. But I want to see if this will actually work. So first impressions here, the D-pad does feel like a little bit stiff, so I don't know how well this will work out, but we're going to have to give it a go and see. So let's go try it, guys. All right, guys, so what makes the most sense to me is we try out Dig Dug here. So let's give this game another go. And first test, actually, the D-pad, it felt stiff to me, but um, that feels fine. Okay. The first test, actually, the D-pad feels fine, and Dig Dug is actually responding the way he's more or less supposed to. It is worth noting, and I did, no I did note this earlier, that Dig Dug does have some slightly weird mechanics where he doesn't turn on a dime. Yeah, okay, so that f actually feels pretty good, so why don't we try out a game I'm super familiar with, if this holds up. Alright, so this here is a game that Everybody knows it needs no introduction, and way back in the day, actually, I used to be decent at speedrunning this game. I would do it on emulator, I never really played it on original hardware. But I was decent at it, so let's see. Now again, things do play a little bit weird, just because you have to um, hold, the, hold the controller sideways to do the run and jump, but it's not too bad, actually. Now obviously I'm not speedrunning this, I'm just trying to give it a real, real test here. And, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty good so far, to be honest. Now, in the previous video, when I installed these pads onto a Super Nintendo controller, the result was immediate and massive, like a massive difference. Now, the new D-pad pad doesn't feel as great on this controller as it did on the Super Nintendo one in comparison. It still feels good. It feels almost brand new, and I think the fact that it doesn't feel quite as good is just due to the fact that the NES isn't quite as responsive as the Super Nintendo in terms of controls. But then again, that could just be an opinion. That could just be me. But overall, guys, I think this is pretty much a success. There's just one game left that we ought to try out so I can really be sure. All right, guys, well, this was the game that originally made me realize that I kind of had a problem with the original NES controller design. So if there's any game that will cement in that this dog bone controller is fixed, it's this one, at least for me. So we're going to give this a go. I'm obviously not going to show all the footage of me playing this, but we're going to give this a go. I have not played this in so long. To really kill at it, you got to be really on top of the on top of the ball here. 
Like, you gotta kill everything. Okay, so while I'm nowhere near as good as I was back in the day when I originally injured my hands playing this for the NES, I am having a blast, and the D-pad on this controller is not holding me back whatsoever. So I think that's a win. I think we have fixed the D-pad issue just by swapping in a Super Nintendo D-pad. So if you are having a similar issue with an NES controller, just know that you can actually interchange the pads between them. I am going to play this a little bit more because I am having way too much fun. All right, guys. Well, I think we could call that a complete success. The controller now works perfectly. I have zero issues, completely zero issues, which is awesome. I can finally use my favorite NES controller again. I haven't been able to use it for a good year. I just completely forgot about it because it was useless without that D-pad. Now, to reiterate, you don't have to do what I did there. You don't have to use a Super Nintendo pad. You can get a pad out of a broken old original NES controller like I was going to do, like this one here. Like, you can just get the pad that was originally in one of these and transplant it in, at least in theory, or also online on eBay or other places. You can order replacement pads for NES controllers, even specifically the dog bone. But I didn't want to do that because I had the Super Nintendo one on hand and I was curious if it would work. And in the end, yeah, it does. It's also worth noting that while you're switching out the pads, you can also switch out the buttons and do some other cool mod related stuff if you want to, of course. I just wanted to get my original controller working again, but there's a lot you can do when you're modifying and fixing these things. But yeah, guys, that pretty much wraps up this video. There's not really a lot more else I can say. I mean, we fixed the controller. I can now play tons of NES games using my favorite, most comfortable controller. I'm definitely going to be playing a lot more NES now that that's been fixed. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions or comments, definitely don't be afraid to leave them down below the video. It's also worth noting that that's the last broken piece of retro tech that I really have kicking around. So there's probably not going to be another one of these videos for a while unless something breaks and let's hope something doesn't. But uh, yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed. And as always, I will see you in the next video.